in any event, nicotine does seem to be very good at enhancing cognitive function, at least in the short term, which is not to say that it isn't without its side effects, which we will talk about. And again, those are side effects that are independent of smoking or vaping or other forms of ingesting nicotine. For instance, dipping or chewing tobacco is known to cause a 50-fold, yes, 5-0, 50-fold increase in mouth cancers, things like leukoplakia, and just generally is terrible for your health. I'm sorry to break it to you, but uh, if you're dipping or you're using snuff or things of that sort, you know, certainly I'm not going to tell people what to do. I'm, uh, that's not my, my role in life, but you are dramatically increasing the probability of an oral cancer or of a mucosal lining cancer of some sort. So it's not just that smoking and vaping are bad for your health. These other forms of delivery from nicotine can be bad for your health as well. Now, whether or not ingesting nicotine by way of nicotine containing gum or patch or toothpick or other method is dangerous for other reasons is a discussion that's important. Right now, it appears that provided the dosages are kept reasonable, we'll talk about what reasonable means a little later, and the frequency is kept relatively low. So not relying on these things constantly, there may in fact be some benefit to ingesting nicotine from time to time, provided that you are not still developing your brain. Now in reality, neuroplasticity goes on throughout the lifetime. Your life is actually one long developmental arc. It's not like development occurs and then stops, but certainly for people before puberty, during puberty, and probably for the next 15 to 20 years after puberty, Avoiding nicotine is probably a good idea. Now, of course, development is your entire life. It's not like development starts and then ends, but certainly for people that are 25 years old or younger, ingesting nicotine as a way to enhance cognitive function is probably not the best idea. And certainly, please, for those of you that are 15 years old or younger, ingesting nicotine in any form, unless it's prescribed by your doctor for a very specific clinical reason, to me seems just like a terrible idea based on all the data that I've read. And the reason for that is it's going to create a scenario of nicotine dependence in order to achieve heightened levels of mood and alertness, et cetera. And that's bad. And what we're effectively talking about is an addiction for nicotine directly, not necessarily the delivery device method like smoking or vaping, although it could pull that in as an addictive or habit forming behavior as well. But you want to let your neural circuits develop to the point where again, unless there's a clinical need for a prescribed drug from a licensed physician or psychiatrist, et cetera, that you're not relying on chemical enhancement of these circuits. For people who are 25 years or older, and again, that's not a strict cutoff, but roughly 25 years or older, but for those of you that are thinking about using nicotine to enhance cognitive function as adults and your brain development is slowing down, right? It never ceases, but is slowing down or has slowed down to the point where we would say developmental plasticity is largely over and you're now operating in the, in the context of adult neuroplasticity. Well, in that case, there may be instances in which increasing acetylcholine, dopamine, et cetera, by way of nicotine ingestion might be a good idea, but certainly not by smoking, vaping, or by direct contact of tobacco to the mucosal lining tissue of the mouth or nose, so-called dipping or snuffing. For the last 20 minutes or so, we've been talking about the biology of nicotine specifically, how it impacts the brain, how it impacts the body, why it feels so good, why it can enhance focus. And we've largely set aside smoking, vaping, dipping tobacco, and snuffing, and the negative effects that those all have on mental and physical health. Working down from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet, we can say that smoking, vaping, dipping, and snuffing negatively impact every organ and tissue system and cell of the body by virtue of the fact that they all damage the endothelial cells. Again, the endothelial cells are the cells that make up the vasculature, which delivers blood and other nutrients to all the cells and organs and tissues of the body. And those endothelial cells are strongly and negatively impacted by all of the practices that I just described. Now, the way that that happens varies a little bit from each one to the next. For instance, it has been estimated that cigarettes contain anywhere from 4,000 to 7,000 toxins. Now, the word toxins is a real buzzword these days. You hear about detoxes and toxins. But more specifically, we know that it contains carcinogens. These are cancer-promoting compounds. For instance, we know that the tar in cigarettes, even low-tar cigarettes, as well as the ammonia within cigarettes, as well as the formaldehyde 
contained within cigarettes, as well as the carbon dioxide that's generated from smoking those cigarettes are all carcinogens. Carbon dioxide also has the negative effect of depleting the amount of oxygen that's delivered to any and all of our tissues by way of the impact of carbon dioxide binding hemoglobin and preventing hemoglobin from delivering oxygen to the tissues of the body. So while there may be 4,000 or 4,500 or 7,000 toxins, depending on which cigarette, which papers they happen to be rolled in, whether or not they're filtered or non-filtered, the type of tobacco, et cetera, et cetera, there are a tremendous number of toxins and there are some very potent carcinogens within that long list of toxins. Again, ammonia, tar, formaldehyde, and carbon dioxide being the most potent of those carcinogens. Now, the fact that there are carcinogens in cigarettes sometimes leads cigarette smokers, and particularly the cigarette smokers that have the hardest time quitting or that enjoy their cigarettes the most, from saying, well, listen, everything is a carcinogen or everything kills you. Well, uh, certainly that's not a true statement. And while there are other carcinogens in the environment, so it environmental hazards like solvents. And um, if you even if you work in a laboratory, for instance, we use in the laboratory DNA intercalating dyes. These are literally dyes that allow us to see the DNA structure of cells and see the proteins they make and see the RNAs they make. And it's very important to wear gloves when you work with those things, because as the name suggests, they intercalate, they actually get in between the strands of DNA and separate them. They are mutagens, they mutate DNA. They are often carcinogens as well. So we have them in our laboratory, but we take certain precautions to not have them negatively impact our health, safety protocols, and so on. We hear that there are carcinogens in car exhaust and bus exhaust and in all sorts of things like pesticides, and that's all true. So in the argument of probabilities, one would say, well, if there are all these other carcinogens in the environment, why would you compound their carcinogenic effect by smoking or vaping or dipping or snuffing? But that usually doesn't get people to quit smoking or doing those things because of the powerful reinforcing effects of nicotine itself. So again, nicotine is the reinforcing element by way of triggering that dopamine reinforcement pathway, the mesolimbic reward pathway. And of course, there are all the other additional effects of increased focus, such as increased ability to pay attention to work or to others that lead to other rewards. And so then it becomes a situation of compounding rewards. So it's not really about the cigarette, it's about the nicotine. And it's not really about the nicotine, it's about the dopamine that the nicotine evokes. And then it's not really about the dopamine that the nicotine evokes directly per se, but also about all the positive effects that that increased dopamine results. So once again, I'd like to thank you for joining me today for a discussion about the biology and psychological effects of nicotine, this incredibly powerful substance. And as always, thank you for your interest in science.